This is going to be Alderman as a Mistweaver. Kind of sizable dungeon. Looks like this happened about 45 minutes after uh, the... Oh dear, I'm still forgetting what it's called. That dire mall wing. Why do I keep drawing a blank on this? Warpwood Quarter. There we go. Looks like this is about 45 minutes after my Warpwood Quarter run. And the same level. Not much has changed. Uh, this is not a dungeon guide. I'm not an expert at this game. This represents my personal experience with a random dungeon group. Uh, Paladin Tank, Orc Warlock, Troll Druid, Tychondrius, Tychondrius, Thrall, Ragnaros. Okay. There was the map for a moment. I need to target something uh, pick up quests super quick. Everybody's already fighting, of course. Hold on, no, that's a warrior, not a paladin. <laughs> what, I saw a blood elf and I assumed it was a paladin? No, there is a paladin in the party. Um, okay, right, but it's not the tank. I have a retribution paladin this time. This is one of those dungeons I remember running actually multiple times way back when I played in Classic. Don't think it got trimmed down much. It's mostly the same. I don't think it's entirely the same, but it's this is uh yeah, this one's still pretty meaty. <laughs> Warrior doesn't quite know his way around, maybe. I don't think I do either. Not the most maze-like of dungeons, but also not the most straightforward, that's for sure. So enemy shaman totem there. That healing ward is probably helping out the... what are these things? Um, I forget what that enemy type is called. Anyway, whatever we're fighting. Uh, so you can target the totems and get rid of them. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. I'm not really sure in this case. It's now bothering me that I can't remember what those creatures are called. I know I knew at one point, <laughs> but at the moment I don't. This looks to be a boss of some sort. Pretty unceremonious, he's just like in the hallway with the rest of everybody. Sometimes there's a big fanfare for bosses, sometimes they're just sort of wandering around with the rest of the dungeon dwellers. That one's down. His friends are still here, though. <laughs> More uncertainty about which way is the way to go. Why'd I turn enemy nameplates off? I like those. I guess I didn't when I recorded this. <laughs> I guess I was trying them out and hadn't figured out which way I like them better yet. Is this the cave with the lost vikings in it? Or is that somewhere else in here? That's somewhere else. I don't see any dwarfs here. I am out of range. Oh, 
What are we doing here? This looks like a dead end to me. Is this part of a quest, or do we just not know which way to go? Are we doing a full clear? Oh yeah, this does have the Lost Vikings. Here we go. Yeah, so a reference to a uh, Blizzard game from long ago. Get to fight all three of them right here. And they do things appropriate to the uh, the role they had in that game. Eric the Swift is running all around. I forget which the other two are. One has a shield, one uh, does something else. Trogs, that's what they're called. Okay, yeah, so like three dwarves in the middle of this dungeon full of trogs. Those things we were fighting whose names I couldn't remember. Eric's pretty annoying. He runs all around between everybody who's attacking him, off into the corner. Hard to catch up to. So yeah, it looks like that was a detour. I guess those guys are optional. You can probably just skip them and move on. <laughs> Nobody knows where to go here. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> Some kind of little model city here or something that the camera gets caught in if you walk through it. So it's very disorienting. Don't walk through that. Like I did. Yeah, this is not really a spinning crane kick situation. I didn't know how to use that ability at this point. It's just like a bunch of chaos going on, but not really much for me to do because everybody's health bar is full. So I'm trying to contribute to damage, but people are just like flying all over the room. It's hard to keep track of what's where. Yeah, look at this chaos. Hold still. <laughs> ah. Everybody moving around like a really unnecessary amounts. This group's fine. No bad vibes here. Just like... <laughs> People are uh, moving around a lot and don't have the route memorized, which, you know, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Um. Oh no, silence. Oh no, health bars are barely going down. Oh right, um, there's like a summoned boss back here in this model city room. There she is, yeah. I'm not sure what the criteria are for summoning her. Oh, don't you get like that staff that's stuck into the city over there. I think you get that from the dwarves and then use it to summon her or something? So maybe they're not as optional as I thought. She's part of the quest. That's we're on. Okay, yeah, I'm remembering. Somebody else in the party did it, so I wasn't really involved. I'm just along for the ride, I guess. There we go, that's where you want to be dealing damage from, the back. Because for one thing, frontal cleaves won't hit you. For another thing, the enemy won't dodge or parry or whatever and block. Oh no, a helmet. <laughs> I took it off because I didn't like it. It was only a very small incremental upgrade. And I want to take it back for transmogrification so I don't have to see my character with the ugly helmet on. <laughs> that was a particularly ugly helmet. <laughs> uh, yes, I do care about aesthetics. Ew. 
if it were a huge upgrade that would be a game changer, I'd put up with it, but it wasn't. That one can easily wait. Why did I have a gear icon for a moment there? That's a weird thing to interact with a dead enemy with. Maybe there was something else interactable there that I didn't see. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. Skinning. Lots of things to skin, not a lot of time to stop and do it. Balance Druid and Moonkin form here, by the way. I've seen there's this, like, alternate Moonkin form that looks pretty cool. It's not, like, not the way that one looks. That's the classic look. I'm not sure if it's a racial thing or, like, there's something else to it. I've never played a Balance Druid. I am not familiar with them, like, at all. I just know they are ranged damage dealers, and that's about all I know can go into Moonkin form for, I guess, extra damage? I don't know. People are split up. But I want to follow the group leader if I can. Other people can be off doing their own things. Healer sticks with tank. Almost always. So another quest goal here of some sort, but I don't really have time to stop and read it. So gotta pay attention. This looks so messy, you know, I'd be worried about it if things hit harder in here, but, like, nothing's really doing much damage. So as chaotic as this is, it's fine. Doesn't really matter much. I need to get closer. I am sensing that when I was doing this, I was having a little bit of trouble keeping up with all the chaos. Because <laughs> there are moments when I'm just kind of standing there doing nothing, like trying to figure out what's going on. Which is fair, just like, look at all this. Oh, this is a boss. Okay, he looks exactly like the other things we were fighting. I noticed when this much time went by and he wasn't dead. <laughs> Again, just kind of mixed in with all the others as far as I can tell from my perspective. Maybe there's something special you have to do to summon him that other party members did when I wasn't watching. Yeah, Healer has a good vantage point for a lot of stuff, but not a perfect one. The Blood Elf Warrior has transformed himself into a gnome somehow, for some reason. So now we have a tiny tank. Sure is nice to have those maps. <laughs> those weren't always there. Oof, yeah, good luck navigating this place without any form of a map. Other than that, I guess you always had the mini-map. That one was never not there. But the big map where you could see the big picture. Which isn't always perfect, but it's sure better than nothing. Quite valuable tool. I'm very glad they added them to every dungeon. I can get away with skinning a little bit. I need that heavy leather. For some reason. Even though professions are pretty useless, I still want to level them. It's a number I can make go up that might be useful for something someday. <laughs> really, it's just like another activity to do in this game, mostly for the sake of doing that activity. I used an interrupt! Or at least what... Passes for an interrupt for me. Wonder if that voice clip was always there. Ironia was a little bit talky, wasn't she? The 
others haven't said anything though. I'm gonna say that one was probably always there. Who the heck are we fighting? Galgan Firehammer? That name doesn't even look familiar to me. Yeah, a lot of the bosses in this place are just completely unremarkable. They're there. They have more health than the other stuff you fight. That's about all you can say about them. I do enjoy this dungeon. It's just that it has a lot of unremarkable aspects to it. But it's somehow kind of like a fun, enjoyable, unremarkable. Cool scenery. Just mazy enough to be interesting, but linear enough not to completely get lost. I can deal with a cape a little better than I can deal with a helmet. <laughs> so I guess I'm okay with making that switch mid-dungeon. How did you level up? What action right there caused you to gain experience? Well, that's a mystery. Uh, I think that thing that I just rolled over was the reason that the Blood Elf looks like a gnome now. I don't know if that's a toy or a potion or a what, you know. Just one of those four fun items that you can use to look like somebody else for a time. I see that my nameplate is red. Something has thread on me. I moved around the corner there so that it would run to me. It was that dude. The Stone Vault Geomancer. Um, tank was standing right there, so by moving around that corner, I ensure that the thing that was casting on me would stop having line of sight and therefore have to run into where the person who's supposed to take threat from me is standing uh, in order to get at me. Okay, that is a voice clip that I'm... No, I don't remember if that one was always there. I'm sure the um, tanks asleep do something about it. So I, I did. Somebody did. I don't think it was me because my detox is not in cooldown. Hmm. I need to get that sleep icon there is one to really watch out for because being asleep is pretty bad. Corruption... What those two have is not nearly as bad. This deals a little bit of damage. I can just heal through it. Doesn't hurt to dispel it, certainly, unless I need my dispel off cooldown for something else. Like, say, a sleep effect, since those are happening during this. It's hard to know sometimes. Same thing with interrupts. Like, which ability do you want to interrupt? If you go for the little one, maybe you'll miss the big one that's more important. Maybe, like, three people will simultaneously try to interrupt one ability because they're not coordinating, because in groups like this, you usually don't coordinate much. We're all shrunken for some reason. There we go. Um, uh, you know, then for the next uh, spell that whatever three people try to interrupt is cast, everybody's on cooldown, so nobody is able to interrupt it. That's a bunch of trogs all at once. Okay, finally something I actually might have to work a little bit to heal through. I seem to have chosen Life Cocoon. That's fine. Back at this level, I used that ability a lot. I guess just because like I didn't have my full toolkit. These days, I hardly ever use it. Just don't find it necessary most of the time. It's good every once in a while, but just like I was talking about with interrupts and stuns and dispels and stuff. Sometimes better to save the cooldown for when it's, like, an emergency, you know? If a tank's portrait's suddenly red, then I want to be able to hit my 7 key and be sure they won't die for at least a moment. Ah, 
Those tentacles coming out of the ground, yeah, that's a warlock thing. I don't know what kind of warlock thing. I think affliction? Yeah, I've been seeing Seed of Corruption on things, I think, which is an affliction-only ability, I'm pretty sure. I know a little bit about warlocks. I've played one. Would like to play one again. They're a pretty interesting class. Apparently the player base is feeling, at least based on what I see on the forums, which... You know, are a fun read if you want to see a bunch of people complaining about a bunch of stuff. <laughs> the the complainy ones are the ones who really stand out there. Anyway, yeah, so I read them for fun just to see what people are complaining about, and I see a lot of complaints about warlocks being undertuned compared to all the other classes now. So they're considered weak at the moment, but still good for various utility things. Fun to play if you like that play style, so you know. You're fine. You don't always have to play whichever class happens to be able to do the most damage or absorb the most damage or heal the most damage for... Um, for how the game is currently tuned. I think one person has to interact with that, and then it starts waking up these stone keepers, and then some boss dude will come in. Something like that. I need a target. Getting kind of close to the end of this place. But it is quite sizable. Yeah, I can tell I was kind of tired when I was doing this. <laughs> My, uh... The rate at which I'm doing things is a little lower than what I'm used to. <laughs> uh, it's fine, though. This was a fine run to do while tired, just because, like... Not nothing is too demanding here. Door opens. Go around to the lower portion of this. There's one or two more bosses, I think? I thought there was something more serious other than those four stone guardians, but I guess not. There's a quest highlight in that room, but I think it's for actually like one floor lower, which is where we're going now. Dude, he did not need an enveloping mist there. That was completely unnecessary. It doesn't matter because mana's full. It is one of my most expensive spells though. Enveloping Mist and Essence Font are the, the big mana drains. Refreshing Mist's real good. Soothing Mist's real good. High efficiency. Vivifies medium. Then Enveloping Mist and Essence Font are the expensive ones that I need to be careful using if I'm conserving mana. But right now I'm not. All these stuns. It's pretty annoying. Okay, so it wasn't just those three dwarves up in the first floor who were in here with all the other things. There are more dwarves. A few. Oh, it passes for dwarves here. There's some, like, important dwarf lore in here if you want to read the lore, but I don't. <laughs> Is this the last dude? Might be. Looks like another one of those pedestals you have to interact with. Yeah, okay, this is what I was thinking of up above, so it's just like, sort of the same thing twice. Even though Enveloping Mist is a little bit expensive, it's nice that I can just kind of, like, stick it on a target and then forget about them for a while, because it is one of the... It, it's my heaviest heal over time ability. Um, so yeah, Enveloping Mist and maybe Life Cocoon, if really needed, are my, like, buttons to press when I just want to change targets and do something else for a while. Like, attack the boss. 
There we go. Hey, check it out. Level 50. Isn't that nice? Alright, so that quest you get to just complete from here. Looks like I got a new one. Oh, interesting. I don't usually see that. Huh. So automatic quest sharing there. That rarely happens in these dungeons anymore. But that's what it looks like. Uh, new quest that I received for reaching level 50. That one's not part of the dungeon, the, the Peak of Serenity there. That's a monk thing. I'm trying to figure out how to complete this thing. Right, here's the lore. Pause if you really want to read it. <laughs> I'm not sure I have to button through all this. I'm doing it because it's quicker than stopping to read the yes, that was what you had to do. <laughs> um, do we need to teleport out and turn in quests? Obsidian Power Core, that's missing. So one person already left. Everybody else is sticking around to try and finish up quests. Me included, because I have an unfinished one here. I'm assuming this warrior knows where they're going. Trying to figure out what's going on while I follow him. He's doing the same. <laughs> So yeah, this is how I like to communicate in dungeons, just body language, you know, I can tell what other people are doing. If no coordination is required, just like, if we all have the same quest, we probably all have the same goal, just stick together, you know, follow the group leader. They probably are here for the same reasons you are. Not in every case, but while leveling, that's almost always true. Where are we going? Do you know, Mr. Gnome? Are we just going back to the start? No, I see the, the little one there on the map. Yeah, I can see the highlight on the mini-map now. He's looking at the same thing. This mage or whatever that is, uh... Or is that the druid? Has not come along. They're off doing something else. The two of us should be enough here, though. It'll just take a bit longer to kill stuff. Oh, hey! Oh, okay, it's the warlock. He found his way to us. I sometimes enjoy these, like, quiet cleanup sections. Oh man, all these chain silences. Bats are annoying. Uh, these quiet cleanup sessions after all the bosses are down, if there's, like, unfinished business. Almost sometimes more than the, the dungeon itself. I don't know, it just feels a little more intimate. Most of the stuff in the dungeon is dead, but still, some isn't. Obsidian Sentinel, Obsidian Power Core, there we go. So yeah, the other two people who left either had already gotten that quest done, or didn't care about it, or didn't notice they still had stuff to do here. That funny appearance on the health bar of the warrior there is, um... So, like, the, the sort of textured filled-in part shows shielding and damage reduction. So he has his own, um... Ignore Pain, I think, is the name of the ability. So his own warrior ability that will reduce damage for a while. Then my Life Cocoon will show, like, how much damage it can shield through. I found it kind of distracting at first, but uh, once I got used to it, it's actually really useful information to have. So I can see, like, effectively how much have I extended the health bar by putting a shield on somebody, or how much have they done it to themselves. 
if the health bar is full, it doesn't overflow. I can just sort of see that that glow at the very top of it. Um, yeah, so useful information was not in the game last time I had played it. But now it is. What are we doing? We gotta, like, turn in that quest somewhere. Probably teleporting out. Yep, he just did. I'm following his lead. Oh boy, I did that again. <laughs> Death to all who oppose State us. Your business. You gotta choose my reward there. Which one is more useful? Not that one. Pick the other one. Unless I'm just looking for something to sell. If I don't want either of them, then I would choose the one that's worth more. I guess I was gonna wear that ring, so I chose the ring. Okay, I think that's all of Alderman. Uh-huh, we're done here. What am I doing? <laughs> okay, anyway, see you next time.